And then the status quo, what we are doing currently in order to get our information and in order to get all of the intelligence that we need in order to protect our citizens, we are putting the citizens of foreign countries at immense risk. Why this is happening? Well, this is happening firstly because if you capture a foreign citizen and if you get the information out of them by coercion or by not telling them what they, for what purposes this information is going to be used, uh, you are putting them at risk once they go back to their country of being captured by their own government and being killed and tortured because what we are doing here is the oppressive regimes from which we want to get the information in order to defend our own countries. So uh, looking at the motion, our mechanism goes as follows. We think that we should ban all of the uh, types of the uh, all of the types of coercion and deception in order to get the information. However, excluding such things as bribery was letting the person know explicitly what this information is going to be used for and uh, not coercing them into it, but offering them all of the information of what possible risks they are being put on if they get our money, but if they give us their information back. Um, right. Uh, so. Okay. Uh, in these reasons, we are not going to be putting people at uh, the risk of death without them knowing that such risk exists and taking the rational choices by themselves. So now going on to our own arguments. Today we are going to answer. Yes. Go are you okay with like coercion or getting information inside the United States or inside the Western democracies? We are not okay with doing it on foreign citizens. The rest is not the part of the motion. Right. Uh, so uh, now moving on to our own arguments. Uh, first, I'm going to address why we as a government cannot be complicit in such things as the attack uh, on the foreign citizens and their lives. Secondly, why we cannot put people at risk without them knowing about it. And then a little bit of why this information is not going to be viable and is not going to be as helpful as we want it to. So the first argument is why uh, we as a government cannot be complicit in these things. Well, firstly, our intention as a government is to protect our citizens and to make less evil in the world and to prevent all of the types of terroristic attacks and prevent all of the mass murders and other things to happen. With this, we think that in mind, if we want to prevent the terroristic attacks and people's deaths, we cannot put other people into deaths. Why this is the case? Well, firstly, because we cannot put the person at risk without them knowing what they are going for. Why? Well, because we as a government of the Western country, for instance, the United States, if we capture, for instance, the Iranian citizen, and if we uh, try to coerce him into giving the information, we know that once he goes back to Iran, what is going to happen is that his government, if they find out that he was the one who was giving us this information, they are going to simply <coughs> capture him, torture him, and in a lot of cases, uh, this is going to result in the lethal effect and in the death penalty, which is done in a very horrible way in this kind of regimes. So this goes by the following logic, because if you as a person walk on the street and if you do not prevent the murder from happening, this is not the same as you being complicit in this murder. We think that the following logic applies also to our government, because one thing for us is not to prevent a murder from happening. The other thing is for us as a government to be guilty in the murder to happen, which is going to occur if the governments of the foreign countries get to know that this is the case and that their citizens have been given, uh, or their officials have been given out the information to our Western countries, such as the United States, for instance. So we think that having the blood on our hands as a government is not really a good thing. Why? Firstly, because it discredits our aim of stopping the attacks and stopping the, mur the murders to happen. And we think that this is the same for all the people across the world, because if we as the United States want to prevent people from dying, we want the same to happen all over the world. And this is why, ideally, we are involved in the conflicts around the world to make the world a better place to live in. Secondly, if this, is, uh, if this information leaks to the media, which is another problematic thing because all of this secret information is not usually available to the mass public and there is no way of and media control to actually clarify this information to the citizens. If this by any point of chance leaks to the media, which has been happening in the past, for instance, in the United States, think about the reaction that our citizens are going to have on it. Think about the single mom who is sitting at home and knows that the Iranian woman has been uh, tortured by the Iranian government and that she has been subjected to death penalty 
because the American government has coerced her to give the information in order uh, to get some secret intel to prevent the attack from happening. We think that this is going to be really problematic because this decreases the trust of our citizens in our own government. So now moving on uh, to our second point, we think that there are a lot of different other ways in which you can get this information, for instance, uh, the brother. Why this is so uh, completely different from something like coercion or deception? Because we believe that people, at least to some extent, are a little bit of rational human beings. And if you actually let them know that, yes, this is the kind of risk you're putting yourself into, if you're as Iranian woman, for instance, who is given the information to the United States, we will let you know that you might die. However, we will offer you a great reward for this. And this is going to be up to you whether to take this money and to undertake this risk and to give us this information or not to do it and to actually go along with your life. We think that this is going to be a completely different way. Why? Because if you get to know all of the perfect information, which we believe is going to be the case if we as a government undertake this measure, what is going to happen is that the citizens of our, uh, the citizens of the foreign countries will know all of the risks that they will be subjected to. So hence, as a person, as an Iranian woman, you can wave up the options of using this money for your family, or rather as an Iranian man, uh, you can wave up the options of using this money for your family to make it better, or, uh, but knowing the risk that you are undertaking. We think that it is in principle completely wrong to actually not let these people know that they will be killed by their own government if this information leaks out. We think that this is especially wrong if we deceive the people of saying them, for instance, oh yeah, we are like a journalist or we are just the official and this information is just going to be used for newspaper and not for some secret intel or whatever it is, which is uh, currently the case. But it's even wrong uh, if you coerce the citizens into doing it, because we believe that people are likely to say whatever they want under the coercive measures, because uh, if you pressure them and they, the only thing they want to do is to save their lives, what they're going to do is they want to tell you what they actually, what you actually intend them to hear. For all of these reasons, I'm very proud to propose. Thank you very much. It's the bell clear. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. For that speech, I'd like to call upon the leader box to open the case and send our future. When foreign nations are actively pursuing policies that can like annihilate the world, such as um, um, nuclear, um, nuclear warfare, building. And secondly, when foreign nations are pursuing policies that are, can place large uh, amounts of people in mass danger, it is, it, is, it is wrong for them just to claim that we should wash our hands off and not save those people. So today I have two main points to make. Why deception and coercion are the most effective way of uh, uh, gaining intelligence. And secondly, why gaining intelligence is crucial with negotiating with enemies. So firstly, I'll engage in some rebuttal and, 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 and ask them all the questions they completely failed to answer. Firstly, in the first point of rebuttal, on principle, they say that it is, it is, it is wrong to be complicit in, in these things. We believe that sometimes when we engage in things like war, collateral damage do happen. We need to minimize them, but it is completely necessary for the greater good. What are we actually speaking about here? People are gathering mass arms and building them for civil war. People are doing things like enriching uranium that could massively destabilize the region. These are the things that are, we're talking about. For the few people, we believe that sometimes it is necessary to make that really difficult decision. Secondly, on, um, secondly, on those citizens who just don't know, we believe that they, they mischaracterize what actually happens here. In large majority of cases, we grant them citizenship, we grant them like what happens, and we believe that we can offer better protection like then the status quo if they come up with that. And thirdly, bribery. We will tell you why this almost never works and why there's almost never been a successful, successful time when bribery actually works. Okay. Firstly, these regimes are deliberately aware that bribery could happen. So they make sure their families are at risk, they make sure everything that is possible to, for, that, to, for incentives not to pay off. And secondly, a lot of people are not simply not trained, right? They, otherwise, we will, it will be too obvious and under the radar. It means that if they actively know, they need, they're likely, more likely to be nervous. They're more likely to get, get, get shown under the radar. 
also lists of questions they completely fail to answer. Firstly, how are they actually going to um, deal with countries like Iran when they don't have perfect information, when they don't know what their intention is? How are they going to find infiltrate into close networks just with bribery into high ranks who people actually believe and follow the regime and, uh, and, and get to successfully gather information? They need to provide us with alternative ways just other than just bribery, right? Okay, I'll go on to my first point. Why deception and coercion are the most effective uh, information? So firstly, we would like to point out that a lot of these information, the regimes that we're talking about, such as Iran, such as like uh, dictatorial regimes, they act, take active measures to hide, their, uh, hide, hide what they do and to punish those who, put, um, to, um, to, who uh, go, 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 goes against them. Why is this true? Because this is necessary for them to build a network, for them to grow, and for them, it is important for them to hide their information from the enemy, i.e. us. This means that they take all the measures possible. So the only way, we can't just knock on their door and ask them what happened. We need to find out, we need to do things like system intrusion. That is the majority of things that happen here. So things like, like network leaks. So what do we do? So like, for instance, Dooku in Iraq and Iraq, where we have systematic bugs that are used in people's computers and, and to, to go into, their, um, into, um, into the networks of regimes in order to find out what their plans are, in, in order to find out like communication, in order to find out what, what, what they're building. No, thank you. And secondly, why, like, why sometimes coercion? We believe that deception are much more um, effective way. Sometimes coercion is necessary, right? Because, because they're already looking out for people, we need foreign people to work for us. We also need to gain informa crucial information for pe from people who already are in the regime. So we believe that torture is not the only way to, to make this happen. We can coerce them through things like um, we can coerce them to things like, oh, you will never get back home, or like, if you, if you don't provide us with information, you will be never in touch with our family, and giving the active incentives such as citizenship, such as safe place to live. So, we, we, we sorry, no, thank you. When, when, we, when we have massive risks, such as when we need to protect a huge amount of people around the world or for the regimes, when there are things like, um, when, when there's things like mass arms gathering. It is crucial for us to have those information, to firstly like stop them, to warn the people, to make sure we can do other things about them. And secondly, I'll go on to my point, why, why intelligence gathering is necessary to negotiate with those regimes? Why is this so important? Because sometimes we need, no, thank you. No, sometimes you need to deal with, um, deal with foreign regimes and make deals because uh, unfortunately toppling them is just not feasible. So what do we need to do? We need to find out proper intentions of them to make sure they, they are uh, they're making active um, efforts to reform. So where do we see this? In places like current like Iranian um, nuclear deal, right? We need to be damn sure whether actually they're like loosening sanctions in order to build nuclear weapons or, or they actually want to uh, liberalize and open up to the world. Why is this true, right? Firstly, we, the region is extremely unstable. There's countries like uh, Israel and there's like other countries they have been fighting for. So if at the point in which they have these nuclear weapons, what are the things that are likely to happen? Well, you want to, no, thank you. I'll take, I'll take closing in a minute. Um, yeah, sure. Okay, uh, you're talking about uh, Iran, but we already have either partnership with uh, uh, countries on Middle East, such as Pakistani government or Israeli government, or we have other ways, such as uh, uh, Iran nuclear deal. No, thank you. With, so uh, those, we believe that those have been largely ineffective because they hide information from Pakistan. What they, what they really need to prove to us is that without infiltrating their things like their networks to uh, like deceiving their foreign citizens from downloading certain music so we can go into their infiltrate their networks and infiltrate their like nuclear power plants through like memory sticks. There is no other possible feasible way of like really doing this, right? So this means the difference between the region being stable and there being like further hostilities or there being war. At a point in which we face massive harms to millions and millions of people for their safety, for their lives, we believe that unfortunately we need to make those difficult decisions. The, the prop needs to prove to us why, even if 
Like they need to give us other methods other than um, deception and coercion, which we largely use at the moment, which is the majority of the way we consider information and how we will survive with that. Thank you very much. So I'll speak to the other one in here. Rape is a very effective tool for getting into people. It's a very effective way to extract information from people. We don't do it now. Why don't we do it? One, we have other alternate ways to extract intelligence. The same applies in this case. I mean, we don't have to use the most distasteful options available. Two, even if it is utility-wise better, which I will contest in my speech, utility isn't everything. There are many things which would increase our utility, which we don't do because we think are intensely enough. Two parts of the speech. Whether the utility trade-off is in our favor, to, or well, even if the utility trade-off is in their favor, it's still not enough to justify their case. Okay. Firstly, recognize security gains from this are minimal. Why is it the case? One, there are many alternate sources of intelligence. Bugs, wiretaps, computer intercepts information. Two, bribes. If you offer someone a million dollars, maybe some people won't consent, but a lot of people in Iran's regime, I'm sure, would give up for that money. If you increase the funding exponentially to a larger and larger amount, you get a higher and higher pool of people who will be convinced to this. Third one. Sorry, I'll take you, yeah. Do you seriously think that all the, all the, when all the incentive there is to like harm their families, do you think simple bribes would be enough? I don't see why coercion would be enough in that receiver. Surely coercion also means that you have that you, if you if you give information, the regime will kill your family. Okay. So there are alternate sources of intelligence. Now, with some of these sources of intelligence, maybe somewhat more than to get information. If we are happy as government to increase the funding for intelligence services until even these less effective methods are able to get the amount of information we need to be as sure as they want to be sure. No. They want to be sure to a certain extent that Iran has nuclear weapons or what a certain dictator is planning in the future. It requires a certain proportion of information which is out there. If we increase the funding for available intelligence methods, even if those methods are less effective and more expensive than coercion and deception, we still can get the available intelligence. And we've got some worthy trade off to make. Why is this the case? So why is it a great worthy trade to make? Very simple, because we sacrifice some money on our side to invest in more intelligence of different kinds to stop a threat to the citizens of people of other nations that make sense with that. So we're sacrificing money of the Western government for lives and sometimes livelihoods of citizens of other nations. This is a worthy trade to make, which means there's no real security. Second, why is intelligence, intelligence, human intelligence inherently unreliable? Notice follows. One, false information. If you coerce people or deceive them, they may well give you false information because they don't know who you are. As intelligence, they don't know why they should be scared of you. Whether you coerce them simply to get you to stop coercing. Same applies to torture. Secondly, when we get, when we get information, we're, always not, we're not always sure if the information is true. We need to confirm it to many different sources. It means if we need to do human intelligence coercion, to coerce a wide range of people, we can be sure what they're telling us is true, they're not simply plants by foreign intelligence agencies. Further, is often a political bind to intelligence agencies. Two scenarios. One of directors of agencies are appointed by the national government. They have an incentive to follow the national government's policy, which means if your government is democratic, it wants to go to war, like the Bush regime, but incentive to get intelligence which leads to their aims. If, your if you're bureaucratically appointed, not by politicians, you have an incentive to increase the power of your agency and increase your own prestige, which means still to say you've got intelligence you don't have, which means human intelligence isn't always reliable. What does this mean for the trade? -off? It means the trade-off isn't simply on their side you get information to stop a dictator, on our side you don't. The trade-off is as follows. On our side you get information which is slightly more expensive, because that's used all the means of intelligence gathering to get it. But you don't put people's lives at risk. Also on our side you get information, even in the worst case scenario, where there's some information which is purely specific to human sources, which is unlikely. On our side you still get some information, but you get, don't get all of their information, which means you can still make some policy decision. Second, why is morality not everything? No, thank you. Why is morality not Okay. So taking that case at its absolute strongest, there's a utility gain to our own citizens or those in the third world. We torture or harass a few people, we save more lives as a consequence of it. Why is that still not enough to win the case? Now, what I say is that as a general moral principle the average voter would subscribe to, there are things we are unwilling to do, even if it leads to people being better. Note a few examples of this. We're not willing to police based on racial profiling, even when that's more effective. 
We're not going to put people who, from high school, based on their grades, their results, their family, their background, we know are 90% likely to commit crimes in the future, in prison, even though we know that will be an effective way of preventing crime in the future. We're not willing to torture children, for example, or use rape as a weapon of war, even if it's more effective, even if it saves lives. Simply, we are unwilling to dirty our hands with this. Why is this? No, thank you. It's because there's a, there's a difference between action and omission. So when a causal chain happens in the world, which I did not have any part of, for example, a genocide is happening in Africa, someone is dying of starvation, it is different to me as an average informed voter, and I feel less responsible for that than something I have directly started. For example, if I directly kill someone, or if I directly torture someone. This is when it comes to a moral trade no thank you, the trade is as follows. I don't see why the average voter would be happy with torturing people or coercing them or deceiving them, even though that puts them in immense personal risk from their regimes, even if it leads to some potential gains from intelligence, because we can never be certain intelligence to get, we get that place and replicable for other sources, or is it self-reliant? What does that mean? It means that from, an, from, a, from a reasonably rational perspective, it would be presumably acceptable for the average person to say, look, I'm not willing for my government to do these horrific things, just like I'm not willing for my government to torture people or rape people, even though if it's effective. Because I don't want to be tarred with that. I don't want to be the kind of person who supports that behavior, even if it leads to better consequences in the end. Before I go on to quote, we obviously agree that there are sometimes red lines. Your question can show me why is forcing or coercing not US citizens or not Western citizens is a red line. Okay, so second. Okay, so secondly, why we can't control intelligence agency accuracy, and why if we allow some degree of coercion and deception, there will be a far higher degree than we have. We can't impose a line saying you only coerce or deceive people who are guilty or war criminals in this effort. Why is it the case? It's because in short, control of agents and case officers, intelligence agents are incredibly difficult. How do intelligence agents operate? You have a case officer who is in a country, let's say Iran. That case officer is responsible for recruiting assets. He doesn't tell his bosses or his or the intelligence agency who those assets are, what their names are, what they're doing. Because that would make it very easy for any other moles in the agency to reveal who our assets are to the regime in another country, or for leaks to occur. Which means information is necessarily compartmentalized. What does that mean? It's very difficult to control who exactly is being bribed or coerced in what exact way. What does that mean? It means that when you combine the incentives case officers have, to produce the best information as quickly as possible, get as many sources as fast as they possibly can, there's an incentive for them to coerce people who aren't guilty of crimes, to coerce people as far as possible and as much as possible, which means the degree of coercion or deception which will occur, the extent which will put people's lives at risk, is far larger, is very large, because we can't control, because then perverse incentives to case officers put lives at risk. Thank you. Okay, first of all, like bribery is most definitely a form of coercion, right? A coercion is when you give someone a carrot or a stick and you say, if you do something, I'll do something for you. I mean, that's what bribery is, right? That's how we coerce people. But we'll accept that we'll let them take that somewhat little bit of a scribble and beat them anyway for a number of reasons. But firstly, um, they didn't answer June's questions on like how exactly they're going to deploy these bugs to individuals, right? Because servers are physical locations that you have to go into. You can't just like drop a magic button. You have to have someone to go and deploy a USB stick into that server to infect that system. Because there's no reason um, why that happens. But also, there's this inconsistency in the case which says in the opening government, in the, the PM speech, that the fear of repercussion is so massive that no one would ever want to do this if they had a reasonable choice. They then say that people will be able to come to those um, individuals by bribery and do those things anyway. It is necessary to lie to them so they do things that they do not want to do. So. Secondly, we don't have to defend sending them back to Iran after we capture them. That's not what we do. We offer a citizen status. We don't send them back um, to be uh, tortured. So, what I'm going to do today is firstly tell you why, unfortunately, sexual coercions are the only and best methods of gaining intelligence. And secondly, why their principle is inconsistent, but also, even if it works, we think it's fine to take it up on this side. So, firstly, on deception and um, coercion. So, one of the problems with intelligence agencies is if you know 
that you're going to do something wrong. You are far more nervous when you do it. If you walk into a government building, realizing that you are doing something against the state, you have various noble ticks, which trained officers are trained to look for. Intelligence people who guard those buildings are trained to look for. You're nervous, you're sweating. You see, at the point where you don't know what's happening, the point where you've been lied to, you've been coerced to do something, you think that nothing's wrong, and you're less likely to do it. That means that on their side, because everyone in the knows exactly the content of their actions, they are far more likely to be caught, and far less likely to be able to pay attention. Secondly, we think that far fewer people are going to be able to give us this information. Because firstly, they're not going to want to because they're afraid of the impressions have been told us they're dead. Um, but secondly, um, they won't be able to be offered any other um, incentives or coercive tactics we currently do at the moment. So we think that often, one of the ways we coerce people is like, if you do this for them, we will fly you to America and we will protect your family. We will remove your family protection. Often we have um, exfiltration teams to uh, uh, the particular um, individuals. But there's another reason. So firstly, like often these places that we go to, are defended by individuals who are looking for spies. It means a few reasons. Firstly, if you are a foreign agent, you look foreign. That means you need to have someone who is of the nationality, speaks the language, and understands that particular culture. That has to be someone in that country. We've already shown you where the best way to persuade them to do that is to, is to lie to them and do that same sex. Secondly, these people have explicit medical knowledge on like, the power structures of those particular regimes. They have explicit medical knowledge on the personal relationships and the training they need to deploy on um, that thing. They tell us this information is important. They use the words African genocide. I mean, in Rwanda, when they were planning a genocide, it would be really good for us to know that they were doing that beforehand. The only way we do it beforehand is to deceive people in that particular um, position of power, to persuade them, to tell us what was happening, because they were so afraid of what was happening. Other than that, that particular um, thing, that particular. They accept that getting information is necessary. Juno is the one who showed you why it's so necessary. They just conceded that that's the thing. They tell us they can do it in other ways, firstly by literally coercing people. But more importantly, the methods they gave were weak. They said, bugs, we need to deploy those, we need wiretaps, we need to persuade people to put those on phone lines, engineers to put those on different things. They talked about um, server access and network intrusion. We need to have people to actively deploy things in that thing. When Stuxnet wanted to run, we had to have someone who could put that USB key in that computer that allows us to check what the centrifuge is doing and what's happening in those particular inventions. There is no um, analysis on their side as a passive information game. Um, so we don't think that particular works on that side. They then give us the principle and say, look, we're not okay because we prioritize utility over morality. So firstly, we think that a state's foremost duty is to its citizens. And the problem with those individuals, we're quite okay with putting someone possibly at risk to defend many people on a state. A state has to use systems because firstly, those individuals that vote and support the state, the government has individuals that accept. Also, when they tell us they can't control the CIA does, that's basically a watch. If they can't control, if, if we can't control the CIA doing particular first measures, they can't control the CIA not doing it. There's a watch on our side, and we don't think they are to get that particular um, thing. So the state has duty to its um, particular um, uh, citizens. But also, is the utility calculus worth it? Because even in that foreign country, Often we deploy aims to countries that are at risk of internal domestic struggle. So even on that broad country, there is one individual who might possibly harm by regime, but the information that he gives us allows us to defend many people in that sort of thing. Often we go in and we send teams into particular countries based on the information we have, based on protecting those particular individuals. Secondly, on negotiations between told you which wasn't responsible, it's really important that we know what these people are up to. So means that as leverage and coercion. They want particular things from us, and we can say, if you want that from us, you have to stop doing the thing that we do, you're doing. We cannot know what to stop them doing if we don't know about it. We can't force them to stop doing particular things if we don't know they're doing the things they try to do them actively secret. That means the different leverage that we use, things like trade sanctions, things like brokerage deals, things like giving people big things, only gets power and leverage over the bad things if we know what those particular things are we're showing you doesn't happen on that particular um, thing. But also, like under their principle, it would be unacceptable for us to accept some on common trust information, because their principle relies on the fact that it's bad to take an immense risk on yourself for some possible utility. Um, if they contend that people are allowed to make this sort of choice in, 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 in somewhat good circumstances, but presumably you can't know what might happen, because you can't possibly know these circumstances of your death, you can't possibly comprehend what it's like to be hanged or stoned, which means either way you don't have a perfect form of consent. Their principle says that those people should never come to us and get offer up information, so you may get no information on their side. So we presume the principle must be about like, whether or not they are uh, coerced due to what particular um, extent. I know that doesn't make particular sense, but it's important to know that the principle relies on the very function that the immense risk is the only thing they should uh, care about. 
Secondly, we don't have to defend rape and torture. We're not going to do that anymore. Right? We don't do that anymore because it's cool. The reason we don't do that is because the personal harm that does is more deadly. But also, there are practical reasons we don't do that. The reason we don't um, deploy rape and torture is often creates radicalization. The reason we don't deploy torture is often creates radicalization. It is not purely a matter of doing things. It's often a practical and utilitarian reason we don't do things. And about all the arguments to uh, not do those things are intelligent calculus. So we're quite dependent on that calculus and show us that we're not going to save the world, we're 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 going to save the world, we
pretty much the same as the Arabs or as people in the northern Africa. Why is it problematic? Because it makes much more people suspicious, the Arab panel. We believe that much more people are disproportionately going to be actually uh, uh, interrogated under those things. That's why we have many people in Guantanamo who are staying there for a couple of years, even though there are no any suspicion, uh, any reason, even though they are completely innocent. Because most of those people believe simply that they are terrorists, because they look like, uh, like the terrorists they saw on the television or something like that. We believe it's highly problematic and immoral because it is disproportionate. Thirdly, because we believe that those foreign citizens are less likely to have actually uh, uh, help from their states. So either you don't have a all embassy or uh, in that state where you are coerced or tortured or threatened or whatever, or se secondly, because the police simply is not believing you that you are innocent or something like that, you are uh, much likely less likely to go to media. And if you go, it won't be that sensational. People won't think about that. We believe that it makes much more incentive for police to be much more brutal. We believe that it makes using this proportional force. We believe that this proportional force is immoral. We use Force only if it's a minimum force that we can use. We believe it's highly problematic. But now, even if all moral things are completely uh, irrelevant, let's talk about the second thing about uh, efficiency. We believe that you, if you are an uh, open government only states that uh, if you are tortured or threatened, you're going to confess everything. But they don't explain why, they don't, they don't explain the harm for that. So, why is that more likely? Because someone tells you, we're going to kill your family if you don't confess. You. We're going to torture if you confess. If they beat you, that means that you are really, really afraid. When people are afraid, they're completely irrational. They just don't want that the feeling of afraidness is being to stop. It makes much more people ready to accept uh, to accept the fact that even are not sure. That's why most of the people accept everything. That's why we have 20% of the people who claim that they are innocent, that they, uh, even though they that they uh, that they uh, plead uh, uh, plead uh, guilty uh, on the trials because they were, couldn't claim uh, 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 with the burden. Why is Secondly, also problematic because people mostly rely on the, on those coercive things once when you have uh, uh, once they're when they're allowed them. Why is that? Because for corporations, so alternative is corporation. Firstly, you need to make compromises for co cooperation. Secondly, cooperation is something that you need to work on long term. That's why we believe that since lots of police officers and intelligence know that they can short term gain some information, they're more going to rely on those people. Since they're not reliable, we believe that we are going to have more information that is less reliable. Why is it problematic? Because we base our policies on those information. And if those policies are bad and based on false information, we believe that we are going to have less protection of our citizens. Third point, fourth point of extension before that close. Okay, when we want to launch a drone attack in Afghanistan to take out the leader of Al Qaeda or something, we need to know the exact details of the situation. How can you do that without letting the full information picture? Yeah, we believe that we usually have. Uh, firstly, we believe that if we can only gain the information by moral techniques, it's simply immoral and not going to be solved. Secondly, we believe that we can't have people on the ground who are willing to cooperate. We give them lots of money, and if we do it the selfish reason, they're going to tell us. Thirdly, we have satellites. We don't have to have person to know where the Al Qaeda people are. We, uh, we believe it's highly problematic. Thirdly, the soft power. We believe that torture. And uh, uh, those things, once they're revealed, they discredit the power of those people. Now, this cheer is why the West is the motion, the Arab panel. Because we believe that the West usually one of the biggest tools of them of persuading other countries to accepting their values and cooperating with them is actually the soft power. Because the West is usually perceived as having higher moral standards rather than other countries. Why is this important? Because once when you lose them, once we see that the West is using really severe tactics, something that is so abhorrent, we believe that less countries are able uh, going to see them as a hypocrite. Now, if usually when people see you as a hypocrite, they, uh, they discredit you and discredit the values that you have. We believe that less countries are going to accept those things. You can see the example of Turkey that despite for, for a very, really long time, they were trying to enter the EU, despite the fact that they were penalized for six years, something like that. Why? Because they perceive the EU as having a higher moral ground, as something morally really, really superior. We believe that you change this if you, reveal, if you see that the, uh, that, the, the, that the torture is happening. We believe that due to the information that you have, usually those information gets revealed. We believe it's harmful. Dear panel, we explained to you it is immoral, it is inefficient. We explained to you the soft power is harmful and what are the to that. We are more than proud to propose.
Rosie Gaffanek are going to talk to you about real life and reality, what really happens in, the, in these places that we send agents and spies at. We're going to describe to you in specific details what are the reality and why do we need the specific information in order to get, first of all, the protection of, of, the, of the citizens of, of, the, of these places that they, so, uh, 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 that they believe we should protect. Uh, so dearly. Second of all, why uh, we this is the the, be the the best and most efficient way to protect our own citizens, which is the, our first commitment. And, so, and and third of all, this is how we uh, ex extend over uh, first first opposition is why the most important thing is to understand that the, the realities in these arena are not like there is a other side, a monolithic side. There's a diverse side. The, the, the other side is diverse. There are certain groups. The, our goal as as a, 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 an outside operator. Is is to 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 um, get to a place where we don't radicalize the arena, where we fight other groups to to get to our our side, and not the other way. Because the reality in these arenas are there are a lot of groups, and and the, some of them are radical, some of them even are pro West, and some of them are in the middle. We're fighting for this middle uh, uh, ground to be in our side and not. Uh, move to the other side because we unintentionally and unintentionally hurt uh, some of their leaders or some of their people because we didn't have specific enough detail to not cause a collateral damage. But first of all, uh, uh, um, one point of rebel, uh, the, uh, the, the rest would be integrated. So um, they claim that we are being disproportional uh, uh, by using by using our power and and the most efficient way is is the alternative. But please note that we never heard of a, 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 mo a, a good alternative coming from their side. I will explain to you in my point why neither satellites nor hacking computer could really uh, 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 bring us the, uh, the, the, uh, the crucial information that we do need in order to avoid collateral damage. And, so, and, 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 and therefore, we think that the disproportionate power is not necessarily as disproportionate as they describe. So, into my uh, points. So, uh, what are the scenarios we're talking about? So, the specific cases we're talking about in scenarios is that, like, something like finding uh, a leader of, a, of a, an Al Qaeda cell because they're planning an attack, or hunting down Bin Laden. These kinds of operations, we need to, to we need to have um, at the most specific information in terms of we need to know specific timing, we need to know specific location, we need to know the personnel involved in these cases exactly. We need to know about unexpected changes in the schedule that are, are, are planned, um, and, and this information could never be uh, achieved in uh, satellites. Satellites give us a very partial, a partial. Uh, uh, um, picture of reality because first of all that you know you know that they don't always have like the full picture on a, uh, on a specific place because they move around oh, and yes. second one no, thank you and, and second and secondly about hacking computers we already heard from the first half that we have to we have to have the personnel that, that we have to we have to have some from, it, from the inside so that this kind of information is not even close to give us the full details and the full information such as timing schedule personnel involvement etc we understand that so we understand that we need a reliable and accurate info that could only be achieved via person from uh, via uh, people from the inside so once we deceive the spy uh, and by not telling them the exact goal and the exact and the full picture of what we're trying to achieve or, or what what are, we, what are we exactly trying to do? We, we are at the closest as we can to get someone as uh, to get someone from the inside actually. And this is crucial for obtaining these kinds of details we're talking about. Not now. Sometimes, uh, um, okay, um, why is this so important to get as closer as we can to get someone from the inside? First of all, because someone, because there is, this is the someone that is familiar with the local, menta with the local mentality. But th therefore, we say that which, which is the most likely to understand correctly the course of events, which is more, more most likely to, to avoid uh, uh, to avoid collisions or, or clashes with the with the other side. This is why this is so important. And, and according to their goal, in order to protect. The, the people that are uninvolved, and in order to to, to, to maximize the uh, uh, the herd of innocent people, we do need those people to be as involved as uh, 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 as, as much as as much as they can. Why is this so important? So three th things were uh, three impacts we're uh, we're talking about. Let's start from the most important one. So, but okay, no, but before that, yes, first. Ten million dollars, you buy your few people, and at least every organization. 
Given that it's simply more expensive, if slightly less effective, why not spend some more money to stop risking people's lives for corruption? But I just, I just explained to you why uh, uh, these devices that are really expensive, such as sets of satellite and such as hacking from the outside, would never be uh, as as accurate and as and as and, and, and as a. Uh, um, um, Specific, like and, and, and one from the inside, and this this is why we are willing to, to use these measures. But moreover, we, we believe that the main false assumption of the other side is that we're dealing with a monolithic arena. But the truth is that I, as, as as I explained before, that some of the groups are radical, some of the groups are in the middle, some of them are even pro West, and and the main goal in, uh, uh, that we believe to be is that not radicalizing the area, not leading people to move from the middle uh, uh, perception to uh, uh, the other side exactly. So therefore we need to be the most accurate we can. It means exactly that if we, for example, because misinformation and not accurate enough information are accidentally hurting one of the leaders of the middle groups that could be either pro-West or, uh, or uh, um, uh, 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 or, or in the middle, if we, if we accidentally hurt one of these guys, one of, of the leaders of the middle groups, and because because we didn't get the uh, specific information, and we caused this group, this entire group, to move to be against us, this is the mo this is the 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 the, the, um, the worst thing that could happen to us. Why is that? Because we are radicalizing the whole the whole arena instead of mitigating, instead of in, instead of instead of. Uh, um, of trying to uh, 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 to make them more uh, in our side or for the very least less red radicalized. So we're saying in order to do so, we need to, to like operate in a chirurgical uh, way of, of, uh, of action. We need to know the exact information. We need to know the exact location, the exact timing, and, and, and to be as accurate as we can, which of course, by the alternative of the, of the government, just is something that we could never do. We could never achieve and obtain such specific information not by satellite, not by hacking computer from, from, uh, uh, from the distance. Therefore, we are very happy to, to oppose. Then there are three on the other Opposition already agrees that red line should exist. And they say that rape is always moral, and murder is, for example, always immoral, what we, uh, in order to gain information. What we need to prove is that the red line begins and ends with the foreign citizens, and we have already proved to you. First points of rebuttal, and then on to my summation. First, uh, summer speeches. First of all, Closing opposition tells us that we need this in order to protect ourselves uh, from uh, terrorism. We believe that terrorism is something that is perceived as universal harm. That means that every single country in the world perceives terrorism as something that is harmful as for them as for the rest of the world. For example, Pakistani government is fully operational in order to disclose information about Taliban. Therefore, we are able to fight Al-Qaeda even in Pakistan, Afgan Afghanistan, government is also fully operational in order to disclose this kind of information. So we believe that they also have interest to disclose in order to fight it efficiently. But moreover than that, the alternative uh, is uh, things such as Guantanamo. We need to know that there is no one single information that was uh, true that came from the torture and much uh, many people were tortured many people still are and still we get unreliable unreliable information because people fear because people just want to be let go that means that this diminishes our uh, strategy to fight terrorism because providing us with unreliable information second of all 
and more, uh, moreover than that, diminish soft power. That means, and that is the second point of rebuttal, that radicalization actually goes on our side. Once you see that uh, United States or West dehumanize your people, depict them as enemy, deceive them in order to pursue their selfish interests, you do not perceive them as somebody who can have shared interests with you. That means that Pakistani government is less likely to cooperate with us because they do not have public support from their citizens if their citizens perceive as something who stigmatizes them, who stereotypes them, and who tortures them and deceives them. For all, the, uh, for all these reasons, we believe that actually it is more efficient to fight in uh, other alternatives. But moreover than that, opposition claims that state has primary responsibility toward their own citizens. But first of all, they never prove us why is this true. For example, we have responsibility towards asyl asylum seekers. We uh, also uh, show responsibility to some foreign aid. That means that they never prove us actually why do we have primary responsibility toward our citizens. And even if we do, our responsibility relies on the consent, on the, uh, the fact that we trade off some values in order to provide for our citizens. For example, if we deceive our citizens, and diminish their privacy, in return, we are giving them more safety. That means that they gain benefit, and also they gain consent by electing government who pursues these kinds of techniques. On the other hand, from the side of the government, you see that foreign citizens, A, never gave consent because they uh, cannot give consent to our state through elections or through other kind of mechanisms. Also, they do not have benefits in return. That means that while uh, our citizens, if they are deceived, are provided with, for example, uh, better safety, more freedom, or more welfare, uh, all the other benefits, foreign citizens are not provided with anything in uh, return. That means that this is a moral thing to do because it is disproportionate, and a uh, side of the opposition needs to deal with this if they want, uh, if, if they already agree that there should be a line. Also, we believe that force is something that can be used at minimum range only uh, when we need to uh, defend ourselves. But uh, note that uh, self-defense is something that applies only with minimum force and where is direct harm. That's why vigilantes, for example, are outlawed and we believe that they are immoral because they use more uh, of force than they actually need in order to self-defend and they use it disproportional. So we believe that we have proved you that on principle level it is always immoral uh, to uh, uh, to actually uh, uh, deceive foreign citizens or to torture them. And moreover than that, it is not beneficial because we lose information and lose soft power. But moreover than that, we need to have actually a complex picture of the world today. Today, it is uh, much more complex. That means that in nowadays world, cooperation has never been great. For example, uh, for a uh, majority, extreme majority of the case, we either are allies with, for example, Japan, Israel, Saudi Arabia, and they are willing to share our interests because of the other cooperations we have on poli political or economy level. Uh, other countries from the West are also willing to share their information about their citizens because we pursue the same interests, for example, fighting terrorism or greater political cooperation through integration such as European Union or NATO. Or we can induce international pressures on those countries that are not as willing to share. For example, you can induce international pressure on Pakistan by sanctions and all the other things. But for the most extreme cases, for example, dictatorships, you cannot a, uh, gain enough uh, information anyway because they are really close society, for example, North Korea. And B, it is much easier and much more moral actually to uh, find another way in a second closing, uh, to find another way, uh, for example, uh, to support the position such as did in Serbia. We thought for both. Uh, okay, so you're finding certain information from the states like Israel, but they use the exact same measures. But Israel gives consent. We maybe have uh, we maybe have right 
to pursue uh, uh, and, and uh, to deceive our citizens. We do not have right to do it for foreign. Israel can deceive and get, uh, gather information from their citizens. And if Israel as a state is willing to share, it is a moral thing to do. And in most cases, they will share because of the cooperation, because we pursue same uh, same interests and have universal threats such as terrorism. And for all the other threats, for example, for war, as we explained, you, you have satellites, you have international communities, you have uh, another indicates for nuclear weapon for example we resolved uh, one single threat uh, with the iran deal and we also have mechanism to control them by uh, giving them ins inspections etc that means that no direct uh, threat can uh, uh, there is no direct threat that we can actually tackle and for all the other reasons it is simply immoral to use more and disproportional force than it is needed for all of these reasons because we proved you that this is only going to diminish our uh, soft power and to restrain our interests we believe that we want this debate thank you thank you very much for your speech and we give the last speech to space and take the broken Our case is the most important in this debate because of a few reasons. First of all, we talk about a lot of different scenarios. Unlike the first half, we talk about, I don't know, getting nuclear weapons in Iran. We explain to you about every little scenario that happens in Iraq, in Iran, in uh, Syria, in Afghanistan, in whatever country that is, that we have some kind of uh, um, small war between different parties, that Western countries don't want to take part of it to um, um, mellow the war or to make sure th th there are no bad consequences. Second of all, we show you why we have to use specific information in order to get a full intelligence uh, 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 picture. And without this intelligence picture, it is a lot more likely that we will hurt a lot more foreign citizens and it is a lot more likely that we will be able to get an information that is uh, efficient enough for us as a country or as the Western world uh, 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 to handle with this kind of situation. Before I begin uh, uh, talking about my speech, which will be just why we are getting the most precise info, I'll do the two, four ideas. First of all, what scenarios? Second, what kind of information? Third, why this is the only way? And fourth, why is this effective way? I'm going to do three points of rebuttal. So, first of all, the whole moral line that we get, we get from governments. Yes, we do agree that there are red lines, but the red lines are really far. Like, as a Western world, we always believe that the red lines are probably, I don't know, like really hard torture, maybe killing innocent people, that's probably a red line. But we don't accept the idea that putting people in risk in general is a red line. We don't, we don't think that we got a good enough argument or a good enough analysis to believe this idea. But furthermore, we say that using people in this sense is exactly like it's dropping to their phones because that's also going on without their consent. That's also putting them in risk. That's also getting information that no one allowed us to get. So the red line where their logic is also is dropping, is also putting the satellites, is also a lot of different things that are obviously not red lines. We think that's very uh, not common sense. So for the second point of rebuttal, please note that from my first POI in the room when I asked first of whether they're talking also about foreign uh, citizens inside Western liberal democracies, and they told us like a, a vague answer. Now, what was like what, what I meant there is that whenever we have foreign citizens inside Western countries, the like terror cells in Europe or terror cells in the United States, and we need to know gather information regarding a certain uh, 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 a certain terror attack on a certain country or a certain building, in those places, we say, we can't use satellites. We can't use eavesdropping in the same way. So we have dense analysis about gaining specific information, about activating agents that, that look like the locals, that look like the same, uh, uh, from the same place, is the best way to gather this information. And it's also good in the Western democracies. So we already have like the whole Western part in, on our side in the debate. Now let's talk about the other countries. But before that, third point of rebuttal, I'll do it really quick because it's a weird rebuttal because they are trying to argue 
that we don't have a commitment towards our citizens. We think this is absurd. We think we do that all the time. We think that, first of all, like that's why we, we have countries. That's why we have states. That's one of the reasons so we can protect the ones that got into this state. Second of all, we, think, we see that in every kind of policy that we enact, we see that, for an example, in the immigrant policy that we prevent other people from entering our country. So we obviously prioritize our people over different people in the world. So that's off the table. Let's get inside the analysis. So first of all, you need to, to understand that our, that our impacts in this debate are three of number. First of all, the security of our citizens. Second of all, the security of the foreign citizens in order to prevent collateral damage. Third of all, the idea that is then brought to you by not uh, uh, making different tribes to go against our point of view. So let's talk about, first of all, the kind of scenario. So we got a, this idea from first half that we're talking about nuclear weapons and whether Iran is going to uh, uh, continue thinking about the, the, the uh, agreeing to the agreement or not. We don't think that that's the debate. We think that the debate is a lot more about drone attacks in Afghanistan. It's a lot more about just what happened like yesterday, I think, when the United States attacked in Syria, ISIS force, that like these are the kind of situations that we're talking about. We're talking about ISIS forces, we're talking about Al-Qaeda, we're talking about uh, events in Syria. Now, what we want to do is we want, first of all, to attack like a surgical point. Sur second, we need to understand the whole risks and we need to understand exactly what happens. So what kind of information do we really need? We need a specific information to the point where we need to know who exactly will be when in a certain point how many people will be around him how many of these people are going to be innocent and how many of these people are from a, a certain terror cell that's what the kind of information we need to know the second kind of information that we need to know is where is a certain group going to attack and in what which time because if we're talking about intervention in syria like attacking in syria for an example so we need to know when the rebel forces are going to attack a city in syria in order to gather this kind of information and that's the three point we actually have only one way okay first yeah yeah but why then we didn't have any positive information from the Panama? Even though for 10 years we are torturing people, we only get false information thank you, or no thank you, thank you. I'm not talking about torture in its like, most full extent. That's not what we're trying to defend. We are trying to defend coercion and activating agents. And that's a really important part. And that's why that's the only input. Because they tell us that you can bribe and you can uh, eavesdrop and you can use satellites. But the thing is that with all those things, you can, can, can't really create full uh, uh, picture but uh, i'll get to the analysis of activation and activating agents because that's really important so how does it really work it works when we take a, a, a united states citizen for an example that can look like an arab person okay we take we we, we teach him arabic we teach him how they think we teach them their religion we teach him everything that has to do with this certain place then he goes to this place and he is activating different agents. What does that mean? He gets to Syria and he gets to know other people inside Syria by this, like telling them he's part of their organization. That's the deceiving part. Now, this deceiving part is really important because A, it, it means that this person doesn't even know that he's working for the United States. That means that all the risk that the, the governments are talking about is not happening because he doesn't understand that he's helping the U.S. citizens. Second of all, from this exactly, we can get a full informational and full intelligence picture. Only by this we can prevent collateral damage for another foreign citizens. We can collect better information and therefore we're very proud to oppose.